Well, that game shaved a few years off my life. Crossy Posse Packer Nation! Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan. But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Avoided taking a toaster bath for another week. Grassy. And today we'll be breaking down the Packers beating the Jacksonville Jaguars 24 to 20. Before we get to that, I want to do a big shout and thank you to some brand new patrons and YouTube members. First over on the Patreon side of things, we have Tom Golden Tate Grassy. Thanks, Ben. And over on the YouTube side of things, we have Jerry Luna, Aaron Godgers, William Laney. We, we have Mike Engels. We have JJ Gamer Zero. Wesson Moves. We have I Like Tom's PC. Nice and colorful. Yeah, it is. We have Pat B. We have Rebecca Rowe. We have Nolan Moore. We have Jonathan Pennock. And, and finally, we have Harold Gruttenchern. I probably butchered that, and I am so sorry. A big shout out and thank you to you all. So let's talk about the good news. The good news is the Green Bay Packers are 7-2, and two, and they are still leading over in the NFC, and we'll see what happens with the Saints game and the Seahawks game. So that's a good thing. In addition, I will say that given the circumstances, the defense performed admirably, especially coming up clutch with back-to-back sacks to end the game. Now let's talk about some of the not-so-good stuff. First, you got shut out in the first and third quarter by the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have one of the worst defenses in the league. Not so great. Rodgers went 24 for 34, 325 yards, two touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. Also had an interception, which disgusts me every single time he throws one since they don't happen so often. Aaron Jones going 13 for 46, 5 for 49 in the air. MVS had himself a day going 4 for 149 yards and a one and one touchdown, and Adams, eight receptions for 66 yards and one touchdown, also had a couple drops and also had a big fumble. Now, there's going to be some excuses that are going to come out of why the Packers offense seemed to struggle. LaFleur said in his press conference that there really was seeming like a lack of energy with the team that they played pretty darn flat, one I would agree with, and we could get into this conversation of like, oh, were they overlooking their opponents? No. I think as LaFleur has said, and the way that he prepares his team week in and week out is that you're playing the person that's in front of you. You're not thinking about the Colts. You're not thinking about a couple weeks down the line. And listen, the Jaguars, they came to play. We had, again, terrible weather conditions in which the wind was 30 miles an hour, which made throwing the ball pretty difficult. But the offense also suffered from two key turnovers, and you just can't do that in the NFL. And if we're going to play better teams than the Jaguars, we're going to lose if we do that. On the defensive side of the ball, you had Amos with a big interception. Both Smith brothers had a sack. Even Rashawn Gary got in on the party and had a sack as well. And the defense was put in some pretty damn bad spots because of those two turnovers. And on top of that, not having Jair Alexander, not having Kevin King also hurt this team. Over on the Jaguar side of the ball, Luton, 18 for 35, 169 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Robinson on the ground, 23 for 109 yards, and yet another rusher who... Got 100 yards on that Packers defense. Shark, 4 for 56. And you had Cole go 5 for 47 with the touchdown and also had that returning TD uh, on the punt return. So special teams was not so great today. And throughout the stream and throughout the game, the comments that were being made is like, why are we playing down to these bad teams? Why is this so close? This should have been a blowout. And while I can't offer you a decisive answer, what I can tell you is that you need to realize that especially this year, this is a week-to-week league. If we are coming out with a win, that's a positive. You look at the Steelers last week having a close game with the Cowboys, who are god-awful. You look at the Chiefs having a close game with the Panthers, who aren't god-awful, but they are definitely a less talented team right now than the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the phrase, any given Sunday, is most definitely appropriate, more now than ever, than uh, in 2020. Now, I will say a good thing is that David Bakhtiari last night re-signed with the Green Bay Packers, getting their number one impending free agent signed on the books until 2024. He's receiving a four-year, $105.5 million extension. He's getting a $30 million signing bonus, and he's getting $62.8 million guaranteed before the end of 2022. He will be receiving a base of about $23 million per year, up to $23.5 million a year, making him the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history, beating out Laramie Tunsil from the Texans. Now, this shouldn't be too surprising in terms that he was going to get that much money because he was very, very transparent about that. 
He saw what Tunsil got at $22 million a year, and he said, hey, I want more of that. And I got to say, you know, this is 100% worth it. David Bakhtiari is one of, if not the best left tackle in the entire game. I imagine that he's going to be protecting Rodgers not only this season, but next season. And on top of that, he's probably going to wind up protecting Jordan Love at some point. And if you want a quarterback to develop, it really helps when you don't have to worry about left tackle. So that is most definitely some good news for the Green Bay Packers. Now they're going to be turning their attention on if they are going to re-sign guys like Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Corey Lindsley, and or Kevin King. So we'll see and keep you updated on anything with that. But next week, we have the Indianapolis Colts, who will prove to be a more difficult opponent than the one that we played today. They're also going to have 10 days of rest because they beat the Titans this past Thursday night. And that's going to be a tough game, especially if that running game is like it was against the Titans. So, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. But right now, the Packers are in a good spot. I know people are upset that they didn't score more points and this wasn't a blowout. But, you listen, it, it's a win is a win. And I hope we're not back to the winning ugly kind of mentality from last year. But... Sometimes that's just what it is. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy, all social media, see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, Go Pack Go!